kind of a few talks about our socket already, so I don't want to repeat everything again and again. And from my point of view, just talking about the, uh, the protocol itself and discussing some specific feature is a little bit boring and some more um, non non interactive from my point of view. That's why I prepared some more interesting and engaging um, presentation for you. And today we are going to learn about our socket over the building Pac-Man multiplayer Pac-Man game. So I guess have you uh, does anyone familiar with Pac-Man? Have you ever played that game? Cool. So today we are going to build and we are first of all we are going to play this game in multiplayer mode. And uh, first of all, I'd like to, first of all, not first of all, but share you some love with you and, of course, some knowledge. And I would like to make this presentation really fun. So first of all, I'd like to start uh, about for whom this talk. And this talk is for network and application developers. So if you build in microservices, if you build in client server application, this talk is for you because we are going to focus not only on reactive programming, but on some specific protocols, features, and benefits. Also, if you're curious about performance, this talk also for you, because as we will see in at the end, our socket gives some performance benefits and latency benefits. And finally, if there is some reactive programming geeks, are there any program reactive programming geeks? It doesn't matter. That's fine. We are not going into much details about reactive programming because we are going to talk more about protocols and comparison between them. But if you reactive geek, this is also for you. Um, if you're still with me, my name is Oleg. I am from Ukraine, from Kyiv. Uh, I work for Netify. I am reactive geek. I preach reactive a lot. A reactive, from my point of view, is silver bullet. So use reactive at your production. Start it today. Uh, also, a Reactor core contributor. Have you ever heard about Reactor, Project Reactor, Spring Reactor? If you not, this is kind of similar solution to Oryx Java, mo almost identical, but for more advanced server-side development. And also, I'm a uh, books author, so if you're curious about reactive programming in Spring, just let me know, and I will share some links on interesting, um, some on interesting book written by me. So follow me on Twitter if you're curious, curious about Reactive, and let's start. Today our again agenda is the following. First of all, since we are going to build Pac-Man game and multiplayer Pac-Man uh, game, we are going to we, we need to understand what what is multiplayer game. What do we need to to build this game? What kind of communication are there in that game? So first of all, we have to define the problem. And then we have to find a proper solution. And in order, and since there are a couple of uh, solutions that can fit this problem, so, uh, as a solution for this problem, we are going to compare them and understand which protocol or solution is uh, better than other. And finally, of course, we will have some fine, and we will define at the end the best protocol. All right, let's start and let's going to deep into details of multiplayer uh, Pac-Man. First of all, we need to, when we start doing multiplayer game, we may start thinking about browser, mobile phones, and first of all, everything starts with a connection to the server. So we connect to the server, and in case of browser game, server returns us some HTML page, which renders on our, in our browser. Once it happened, we need to get some data, and since we don't want to make some additional requests like give me that, give me that, give me that, we want to use some modern features like server-side push, so we want to rely on this future, we want to, uh, we expect that server push us rela required data like tails, some CSS, JS, JavaScript files, and so forth and so on. And once it happened, we need to start communication with server, like sending our nickname or something like that, and receive some information about the existing player, the state of, of the game, and we'll be able to render some data on the screen. This is the first step. We need to start our communication and start interaction with the server. So this looks like a plain server-side push, push plus uh, kind of request response communication, right? So then, in real-time game, 
we have, of course, sent some updates to the server. For example, we start moving on the map, so we, on every move or on every button click, we have to, to send some information to the server in order to update other players or inform other, other players about our location. And, of course, we need to catch some information from the server about, lo about location of other players, about their movements, movements and so forth and so on. So we, wanna, we expect that server will stream some data to us and we will have some real-time movement of the player and we'll be able to, to start playing in the real game. And, beside that, we have some, some challenge there. We need to earn some, some points, we need to eat some Pac-Mans, we need to eat some uh, special powers in order to catch some, um, some ghosts, but in general this is a challenge game, so I encourage you to start at some point playing this game and uh, eat each other, let's name it, and earn some, uh, some points, because at the end, possibly, we will define the most active player in this game, and I will give some, some special gift for you. All right, that will be at the end, but as I said, this, uh, this, this presentation is not only about game development, this presentation about network, network communication at all. So in this case, I pay, I pay your attention that this fits for every microservices developer. So in this game, we will introduce a third party server, or let's call it metric server, and in that way, we are going to have real microservices system because every browser will send some updates or stream some metrics to this metric server, and the ser game server itself also will send some updates about CPU usage, uh, some memory consumption, and so forth and so on. And in that way, we are going to create real microservices system because now, along with browser and server communication, we have server and server communication, which is kind of real, real-world application. All right, let's summarize what I said a little bit. In general, we have some plain everyday, maybe I would say everyday communication between uh, client and server and server and server, which is server-side push. There is some plain request-response communication, kind of getting, getting some data in, in request on nickname or something like that. There is some kind of client stream because we need to send some updates about location. So it's clear there is a client side streaming. And there is server side streaming, which is uh, score streaming, which is location streaming, which is uh, all updates related to all uh, other players' activity. So uh, finally, between server and server, we have kind of duplex communication because we have to send some metrics and the metric server can send some updates back. So it's kind of dupl duplex stream stream communication between client and server. In general, we have all kinds of communication between our client servers and in general in our system. So let's talk a little bit about toolkit that we are going to use in our presentation. At the backend side, we're going to use Sprint Framework. Uh, how many people are familiar with Sprint Framework? Okay. Uh, most of the, of the of most of the attendees, and uh, along with Spring framework, we are going to use WebFlux. I'm not going into detail about of of these frameworks. I expect that you heard about that, and in general, we are not going on to focus on this. So, uh, a part of that, we are going to use Project Reactor for reactive programming because this is reactive talk, and we are going to use Micrometer in order to flush some metrics to the server, and we are going to use InfluxDB in order to store these metrics on the metric server uh, side. Finally, in order to build efficient communication between our client, server, and server, we are going to use some binary protocol like Protobuf. Uh, everyone familiar with Protobuf? Uh, it's a kind of binary protocol similar to JSON or something like that, but binary. So it's uh, the main aim of this protocol to uh, to, to send less data than in other protocols, like text-based protocols. On the front-end side, we are going to use Phaser in order to render some uh, information in the browser, like game and movement and so forth and so on. Uh, a part of that, we are going to use Reactor.js uh, on the client side in order to build reactive programming everywhere. And we will going to use TypeScript. 
again, we are not going to focus on the front-end side, but just for your information, just in case you're curious about front-end, this is a stack we are going to use there. And of course, we are going to use binary communication everywhere and binary protocol like protobuf on the front-end side as well. So this is basically about um, our stack. If you're curious about the source code, this is the link to the source code. Uh, if you're not, I'm going to quickly uh, go through the code base so you will be able to learn what is going on in our, uh, in our application. So basically we have plain spring stack. So let me quickly show you some dependencies. This is dependencies on the spring, some dependency management. Here we have our game server, game plain Spring Boot application with some additional add-ons to, to, to relate it to some protocols, which we are going to talk a little bit later. And we here we have plain three-tier or three-layer architectural application, like Spring Boot and so forth and so on. Nothing complex. Is it clear? OK. Let's go forward. We are not going to focus on that. Just uh, to inform you that we have uh, some important part here, like this is a server. Again, let me zoom this. This is a client. Uh, here we have some protobuf ideals in order to define uh, API. And here we have metric server. So here we have all of our components. All right. So since I uh, mentioned that today we are going to, in order to learn about our socket, we are going to compare it with uh, different other protocols. And first of all, in order to compare those protocols, we have to understand how we are going to compare them. So, what do we know about comparison? From my point of view, there is like most, uh, two most important characteristics uh, in comparison. The first one is kind of maintainability. Or in other words, how many frameworks is based on this protocol or uses solution, how stable this solution is, or and how uh, big the, com the community of this uh, particular solution and how large is the adoption of this uh, protocol, for example. This is one part of the, uh, this is one characteristic uh, which we are going to use in order to compare our solution. Another side of comparison is, of course, comparison by performance, because performance is something important in real world development, in real microservices, because uh, we need some few few percent of in performance or in latency allows us to handle much more users and in that way save a lot of money for our company. So this is important characteristic for comparison of protocols and we will going to use it as well. And now let's start some comparison and let's go to good old HTTP communication or let's start with old good way and trying to understand whether it fits to in building our solution or it doesn't fit it. So first of all, why HTTP? First, because it's widely used. It's plain and simple. It started from 19s or maybe even earlier and uh, it lives long good life uh, till uh, nowadays. And the adoption of, of HTTP is really high. Every browser uses this protocol. Every language supports HTTP communication and has HTTP clients. So this is why we have to uh, give some honor uh, to this solution and to this protocol and try to understand whether it fits uh, in building our, our game application. Uh, I encourage you to take your phone and scan this QR code because now we are going to start having some fun and playing real uh, Pac-Man game in the meanwhile. And uh, we will do some load and we will make some actions on the server, send some data, and that way we are going to, uh, to measure some performance characteristics as well. Uh, just know that once you enter your name, you have to swipe up um, the text field. And if you want to play in the horizontal mode, you have to rotate your phone. And in order to move Pac-Man, you have to slide up and down and left and right. Are you ready to, to move forward? 
All right. So let me show quickly the first HTTP demo. Here is our web browser. And first of all, I'm going to enter my name, just random name, and start playing. So in my case, this is Pacman, uh, this is Ghost, and in your case, you will be collecting some um, Pacman will collect in some uh, some points, some food. Uh, you may experience some latency because, of course, this is HTTP. Even though I, I'm using powerful servers, we can't avoid some latency. If we're going to to look at the browser. First of all, we are going. We will observe this kind of logs, which notifies me that some packages were dropped because the load on the server too high. So I can't um, I can't serve all the messages with specified latency or with some SLAs, and that's why my client starts dropping some messages and information, and that's not good. This is a bad sign. Which is which says that it's not fine. We start dropping some information, and this is kind of high load becomes high load, and uh, our application becomes unresponsive if it, if it can't handle this amount of data. On the other hand, if you start looking at the uh, number of used resources, we will see at the timeline at the current moment one connection. But in general, it depends on the browser, and we can have more than one connection in pure HTTP 1. But it depends. As you can see, in order to send location, we use plain HR calls or fetch calls, because HTTP doesn't have client or browser to server streaming or client-side streaming. That's why we have to use plain request response in order to send some updates and in that way simulate some uh, streaming of data. On the other hand, we use uh, server send events in order to listen. Have you ever heard about server send events? This is a part or standard of, HTTP f uh, of HTML5, which allows us to create one way uh, streaming from server to client. This is text basic, te text based uh, streaming, uh, but it's better than just plain uh, long polling. And finally, I'm going to focus your attention on the latency, on average latency of each of each request, which is about 50 milliseconds, and the size of the body is around uh, 200 bytes. This is the first part. We just observed some uh, some characteristic of performance. We just played the game. I guess you observed some latency between movement of the players. And it says that it works, basically works, but it's not good. So let's compare HTTP from the usability perspective. Since we are using here um, Sprint Framework, it means that we can use all these Sprint Framework features like uh, annotations, controllers, and so forth and so on in order to build our HTTP API. So here we are. This is the simplest way to start using HTTP on the server side. Plain, smooth, uh, well-known way to, to, to build a server API and game server. Also, it supports some asynchronous and blocking communication over react, uh, reactor types. And of course, it's easy to start uh, using server send event by just just by sending or returning a flux of uh, of data. This means that user experience or user development experience is pretty good. You don't have to to do that much. Spr uh, frameworks does uh, framework does everything for you, and you just have to focus on your business logic, which is one of the most important um, things in the building enterprise application because. If it's hard to, to develop it, if it's hard to uh, start using it, uh, it means that this you, you have to pay some additional money, money for, for development. But with HTTP, it's simple, plain, and well-known. All right, let's back to, to our presentation, and let's do some small summary uh, of, of current solution. First of all, we use server send event in order to simulate or uh, emulate some server-side streaming. 
we use request response in order to send client side uh, stream or updates from of clients movements and in general advantages of HTTP is simplicity in development is a good user experience and high adoption also it's le it's worth to to mention that HTTP is in general is stateless it's good because you don't have to uh, to store some additional state on the server side along with database you don't have to manage some caches and so forth and so on because client will take care of everything in general in in HTTP so we can build stateless solution and uh, simplify our server logic as much as possible but on the other hand there is some disadvantages in HTTP first of all is message overhead HTTP is text-based protocol so it means that everything is text encoded and you don't have a choice or you then have an option to send data in binary message and com or zip it or compact it as much as possible the performance is average I guess uh, you experience at some latency between movements of the player and this is th this is not a good sign of uh, high performance in real-time application uh, also it's inefficient resource usage as you have seen there is a couple of connection so since this is stateless we have to create open close of course there is some uh, addition to HTTP 1 and dot 1 but in general we have to open a few connection uh, Yes, there is HTTP2, but not every browser, not every server supports HTTP2 properly. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, in general, we can't uh, say, I want an HTTP2 connection and that's it. So it depends on the browser and we don't have an option to, to specify that. Um, on the other hand, there is communication rigidity which means that you don't have all the wider spectrum of communication um, technique like streaming, client-side streaming, server try streaming, duplex communication, request response and so forth and so on. You ha you're only um, limited by a few types of communication and that's it. And of course there is a lack of resilience. As you have seen there is some dropped messages so we can't uh, follow the capacity of the server, we can't predict how many messages uh, the server are ready to consume and that's why we simply send push all the requests, push push until server dies or we start dropping the messages. This is not a good sign as well. And finally, stateless is also not good because of inefficient resource usage. And um, some, I would like to, to focus your attention on disadvantages of, t of stateless is kind of we have to manage or we have to recognize which players are uh, making actions at the current moment and the simplest way to recognize the player is to set the cookies and send these cookies on every request which also some overhead uh, in terms of message body size all right we just discussed some disadvantages, advantages of HTTP and we clearly understand that we have to focus on some uh, better resource usage, on some less message overhead, maybe on some binary uh, m message protocol and one of the options is to start using something like WebSocket or HTTP2 because WebSocket is, is fully uh, is, is one connection between client and server, HTTP is something similar to that so we create one connection and can send uh, data back and forth uh, during, uh, during communication be between the parties. In turn, WebSocket is fully binary protocol, HTTP2 also, HTTP al also supports uh, binary message formatting so we have to start looking into, into that direction. direction. All right. Let's start with WebSocket. Why WebSocket? As I said, less overhead, almost no overhead comparing to TCP and high WebSocket is used for high performance. So this fits to our needs and we have to maybe focus on WebSocket. But on the other hand, WebSocket is not the best solution. So why not WebSocket? First of all, because complex in development. Uh, have, we, have anyone in the room had experience in develop developing a uh, WebSocket server. And how is your experience? Is it simple? 
No, I don't think it's simple. I had some experience in developing WebSocket server uh, with that routing, message decoding, and coding, and that's not fun. I don't want it to uh, do that again, especially knowing about our socket. So first one is complexity. And in general, when you start developing your real application, you have to reinvent your appli own application protocol on top of that TCP connection or WebSocket connection or whatever another connection. So we don't want to use that because this is hard from it's, this is some development complexity which we don't want to to have. This is some bug f additional bug fixes and so forth and so on. Of course, there is some existing solutions on top of, on top of WebSocket, but uh, they are also limited in, in some um, in some communication um, models. There is some SOX.js and Storm combination. There is socket IO uh, protocol which allows you to to have some kind of messaging on top of WebSocket. But in general, they are about streaming, and they only have this as streaming or stream stream communication. In case you want to have plain request response communication, you have to reinvent your own wheel again. You have to, to, to create some additional correlations ID, and this is not fun again. So along with that, there is some HTTP2 based solution like gRPC. Uh, everyone familiar with gRPC heard about that? Yes, OK. So in general, why gRPC? As I said, built, built on top of HTTP2, it guarantees on the server side that there will be only one HTTP2 connection and everything will be multiplexed to that HTTP2 connection and then multiplexed back again, framing and all these features of normal uh, communication pro kind of protocol and framework. In turn, this is RPC uh, framework or RPC architecture, ar architecture in building API. So it provides good or even from my point of view, really good and m maybe the best uh, development experience uh, and allows you to build real s uh, th the real server with uh, complex API really simple. Let's start using gRPC now. There is a next link which uh, allows you to, to run the same Pacman application using gRPC. And oops. Here I'm going to start using gRPC. The same application, the same users. Welcome, guys. Um, let's see. Let me find someone and start observing some latency. There is some bugs. It it's possible. Of course, but uh, let me let me find someone. Oh, I see someone. In general, latency is a little bit better, maybe, but it's not the best. We still experience some some uh, small latency. If we are going to to look at the console, we still. Uh, we're going to see some drop it, uh, drop it messages, which is not a good sign. And in general, let's see on the latency, it's a little bit better. So it works. It just works, and that's fine. Let's take a look on the implementation side. In order to build our API, we just have to compile or build proto protobuf files. Since there is kind of built-in generator for uh, proto files, let me quickly show you. There's, there is a few proto files which allows you to define your API kind of stream request response communication for all services. And based on this file, you will get some generated code for uh, gRPC. And then using that code, you will be able to, to define your 
uh, your controller or handle handlers, and using some integration with Spring Framework, you can easily annotate your Im particular implementation and start running your server. So there is nothing complex in that. Similar to HTTP uh, controllers in Spring Boot, and the, the in general, development experience is the same. Uh, on the other hand, we can take a look at the communication, because by that time, we just look at the uh, message consumption from the uh, server side. Here we can start looking at the communication between server and server. And here, in order to wire uh, communication between game server and web sockets uh, and uh, mes uh, metrics server, we have just defined um, only one native channel, connect to particular host and port, receive that uh, the channel, uh, supply this channel or connection or representation of connection to particular um, gRPC generated stop and start sending our streams. So there is nothing complex. In this particular case, I'm using Reactor gRPC integration because gRPC has its own uh, API, which is kind of tricky a little bit. But in order to have these reactive streams everywhere, I, I'm using this uh, wrapper. So this looks like really simple. We can stream some uh, some messages to the metric server and receive some messages back. In turn, we can use all the features of reactive programming, and in general, life will be really good. So this means that development experience is fine with gRPC. So let's back. Oh, let me quickly. Let's back to our slides, and let's. Uh, do some small summarize. First of all, gRPC is about simplicity in development. There is CodeGAN tools that allows you to generate most part of the code, and you don't have to to code a, like you don't have to uh, reinvent everything again. And you can just use uh, the code and tools prepared by Google guys. On the other hand, there is really wide support because Google um, doing uh, Google doing its, um, its best in order to, uh, to populate that tool, in order to support it and support the community. So uh, the adoption of gRPC today is really wide, and we can uh, rely on this solution without any worries. Also, gRPC is about performance, because only one connection. Also, it supports binary messaging, so we, can, uh, we don't have any overhead uh, in message sending, and it means that this is kind of solution for real-time game with efficient resource usage. However, there is some disadvantages from my point of view in gRPC as well. First of all, it's kind of unclear and tricky API. First of all, it seems that we use only one connection, so we can some sp in, in some way specify the connected user to this, um, to this connection and use it with this kind of um, identifier all the way down in during all uh, communication between client and server. However, let me go quickly to, to the code again. However, there is some tricky part in gRPC. First of all, there is, or I haven't found at least, a um, clear way to, to bind UID or kind of user's identifier to a specific connection. But this is not only because of gRPC API. Uh, this is about something more. Uh, I will be back to that in a minute. So, on the other hand, there is no back pressure support. gRPC doesn't have its own protocol. There is no clear messaging specified in reactive stream specification. There is just message writing to HTTP and message reading from HTTP2, which, which means that gRPC relies only on HTTP2 back pressure or in simple or simply on TCP back pressure. So everything is based on byte back pressure instead of logical elements back pressure, which is some kind of disadvantageous. Um, yes, I said that this is just a plain wrapper on top of HTTP2. And the most um, painful part of gRPC is gRPC web. When I started developing uh, this application, I expect full end-to-end -end integration between client, server, and metric server. 
But I found that there is some tricky part in gRPC web, because gRPC web isn't through uh, HTTP2 gRPC communication. In order to start using gRPC on the client side or, or in on the browser side, you have to run some proxy. And this proxy will communicate between your client and your server and map all your plain HTTP calls to gRPC calls. And of course, this is a huge overhead because you have to run, in this case, in our case, this is Envoy proxy. And you have to, to waste some resources for that. And there is no benefits of using only one connection because between browser and Envoy, there is the same HTTP1 communication, which doesn't give us a lot of benefits. And if we look at the browser right now, we will see that we, d we are doing the same the same message sending as in plain HTTP2. Do you see it? Absolutely same communication. No benefits. And moreover, the message size itself is higher than in plain HTTP2 because uh, HTTP because in HTTP we had only 200 kilobytes of uh, in of message size. Here we have two times more. Uh, and the latency itself is similar. All right, so let's back to our presentation and let's summarize ugly gRPC web. In general, gRPC web is mostly rely on HTTP 1, so it's similar to simple HTTP communication. Needs additional proxy, which means overhead and it questioning us, do we need it to use in production at all at current state? And there is no binary, there is same text messages uh, instead of binary message and, uh, messages encoding. And at current moment, at the current state of gRPC web, web there is only request response communication. There is no true server side, server side streaming, only long polling. There is no client side streaming, and there is no, there is no uh, there is benefits that comes with gRPC at all. Fortunately, there is a final solution for that. We are not going to cover all existing protocol, but we are going to focus finally on our socket. First of all, what is our socket? And what does it mean for us? It means some white future, some better and stable solution for our communication over the network. First of all, what you have to know about uh, our socket is that this is a protocol. This is just a specification along, of the, along with uh, particular implementation. And this protocol is binary, so you can use any format you want. You can encode it to binary format, and our socket take care about uh, flashing it out to the network and decoding it back to, to the same binary message. So you'll be able to decode it to normal, uh, normal message format again. In turn, our socket uses only a single connection, and it multiplex all logical connection to, to one stream. It does all logical mappings of the existing or created streams for you, and you just have to use it, and that's it. In turn, it bi-directional, so there is no client and server at until uh, by after the moment of the connection wiring. So once the client connected to the server, there is no client and server. There is only sender and, and responder. And server can start sending messages to the client first without waiting for additional interaction from the client side. So both parties are equivalent in this communication. In turn, our socket is implementation of reactive stream specification in network protocol. So there is similar signals as in reactive streams, but on the, uh, on the network layer. And our socket does all this message and request uh, size mapping for you and just allows you to use it uh, with reactive streams and with reactive libraries right, like Project Reactor. Um, there is multiple interactions in our socket, which gives us more, more possibilities. First of all, there is plain request response communication. So it allows you to build plain CRUD application as with HTTP. There is fire and forget. So in case you don't want to wait for a response from the server and you want to just rely on the connection, 
possibilities just flash and message and that's it like in TCP you can use fire and forget and um, make or um, clean the resource the resources used for your stream earlier there is request stream communication so you don't have to reinvent uh, own kind of halfway streaming like as server sent events there is built-in solution for it and there is stream stream communication or channel communication which allows you to send stream of messages in, in one logical streams in one logical stream in both sides in general to summarize our socket uh, we can take a look at this picture our socket is totally language agnostic it's totally architecture agnostic so you can use any kind of architecture on top of that you can use RPC you can use messaging because you can uh, reinvent your message broker you can use any uh, message format like protobuf JSON and you can use whatever transport you want you can use WebSocket you can use TCP you can use UDP or iron or even HTTP2 so it doesn't limit you uh, it doesn't limit you to to specific uh, to specific rule or to specific solutions it allows you to use it everywhere just by following the particular message formatting and mes message formatting and protocol so let's do some coding and let's see how to use our socket in Java because I guess it's important to understand uh, what is the developers experience uh, from the uh, in, in, in the R socket usage. We're going to create first of all a simple a simple R socket server. There is R socket do we have a time for that? Yeah we have a couple of minutes. In order to start using R socket you R socket you just have to start using static factory. And you can using uh, receiver API you can define your uh, server you can specify your acceptor which is kind of handler for all incoming payloads and for that you just need to provide simple lambda and return your plain implementation or simplest implementation of the handler for all incoming uh, incoming messages there is a couple of communication uh, channels as I said or communication models you can uh, implement any of them but for simplicity we can just implement request response and as I said all messages are binary and if you look at the payload you will see that all the data is in byte buffer format so you can send whatever you want in byte format and read whatever you want in the same binary format without uh, having any overhead so in order to build plain request response communication you can simply say okay I just want to return default payload and say hello world then you can simply specify transport whatever you want as I said there is a wide uh, range of transport that you can use you can actually build uh, our socket protocol on whatever uh, existing solution you want but in this case we are going to use for example WebSocket WebSocket server transport specify it on some specific uh, on some specific host and port and in order to start it we just need to say start it and wait for connection wiring in that way we created our simple server and in order to start communication with this server we just need to create in this in the similar way um, our socket connector here we are going to specify WebSocket WebSocket client transport in the similar way yep the same transport and as I say there is uh, once we wired the connection between client and server there is no particular uh, kind of uh, client or server there is just a peer and peer and everyone can be a caller and a responder and in order to show that I am going I'm going to uh, to specify client side acceptor which allows me to receive our socket and to return some R socket ba back similarly to, to, to that 
so every party can listen to incoming data and respond to them and send some, send some data um, to another party. Yep, in that case we don't have to use mono. And here we are just client, hello world, in order to see that every, ev every party is equal. And finally we just need to start and start using our socket. So let's do the first call, which is uh, world one, plane request response, and let's say send some plane payload here. And one of the exciting things here is that our socket Java is built on top of Project Reactor. So all Project Reactor futures are built in, in our socket Java client and server. And you don't have to uh, to combine it with any specific additional library and you can just use it uh, from scratch in order to build your business logic. And here we just send some data and we are going to, on each signal we are going to, to print some uh, output here. And by doing that we will start our simple, really simple application. We just send and receive and consume some data. Yeah, here we are. We got our hello world. That's it. That's all we need to, to start doing communication. In turn, in order to start sending data from the server side, we can use sending our socket. So at the connection acception uh, stage, we can uh, receive kind of another peer or socket and start communicating with that peer as well. And here we are going to send some plane payload again. Let's do that like that. And by doing do on each similarly to that, we will see that we observe client messaging or we will initiate our communication first before any interaction from the client side. And exception. That's what I expected, of course. No joking. Um, it doesn't matter. Shit happens. Um, we just need, yeah, maybe we need, just need to, to run it asynchronously and we don't have to block everything. Let's just try it in order to make sure that I'm not just... Yeah, looks like it worked. Yeah, here I got my client, hello world. So I just connected to, this, uh, to the client and client sent me uh, earlier uh, hello world from its side. That's amazing. But of course, we don't want to, to work with the plain framework. First of all, there is a good news that there is integration with Sprint Framework. First of all, there is my own plain integration with Sprint Framework because I don't want to wait um, for, for final integration with real Sprint Framework, but there is some integration. I will share you with you some links at the end. But in general, uh, to start using our socket with WebFlux, you just have to include this, uh, this plain starter in your application. And all you have to do in order to start using our socket in the similar way to HTTP, to gRPC, you have to do a simple configuration. Of course, I do some hacky way of passing links and so forth and so on, but doesn't matter for now. But in general, what you have to do is you have to define an acceptor as a bin so in that case, this is set up a scepter which allows you to, to get connection set up and start sending data um, to the client or push data to the client before any additional interaction from its side. And here I'm going to just use kind of um, our socket RPC, which is similar solution to uh, gRPC. And uh, our socket RPC is an additional uh, wrapper on, on top of plain R socket Java and a lot provides you with the same code GAN as for gRPC, which allows you to build the same RPC based application. So let me show you this code GAN stuff quickly. 
there is similar plugin setup as for gRPC but for RSocket RPC. So you just have to include that, generate your stops like that, normal interfaces like extra service which allows you to accept some message, to send some flux of messages back build your business logic on top of that like these controllers plain simple code clear code you don't have to write anything else except that and then you have to define your bins for servers which accept this created business logic or controllers as an interfaces and return it back to some integration with rsocket rpc and that's it everything else is done under the hood by the by the starter. So from my point of view, the developer's experience should be uh, smooth at that with, with our socket as well. In order to start communication with external services, like in order to start using our socket Java, in order to connect to metric server, you just have to use similar client or uh, as, I, as I have shown similar way uh, as with gRPC, you just have to connect, specify transport, specify URI and uh, use generated client code in order to start, message, uh, start messaging between server and server and that's it. Plus Reactor as, ben as, an, as an additional uh, feature with uh, Fluent API for so that. Finally, let's, uh, let's just back to our presentation and I am welcoming you to, to scan the final link and observe real, real-time gaming with our socket. Here is the final link. Here I specify and here I use WebSocket as a transport for RSocket protocol and for RSocket. In turn, as I said, RSocket is um, multilingual, or um, it doesn't matter which, it, it just protocol, so it can be implemented in any language. In that case, I'm using RSocket Java, or RSocket Java with RSocket JS over WebSocket connection. And if we're going to reload this page, we will see that only one, only few WebSocket connections has wired. One with our main server and one is one with a metric service. So this client and this uh, implementation sends data to metric service and to game service uh, at the same time. And only using two WebSocket connections which allows us to save resources. So if we start playing you'll see much better response time. Let me try to find anyone. Almost, there is almost no delay. Of course, it's not the best solution, like in terms of implementation of my game, because I'm just um, a noob in, in game development. But it's definitely better than with gRPC and HTTP. You can see that the latency and overall uh, play uh, and overall experience, game experience is better and smoother. All right. If we're going to look at some metrics uh, on the server side, we will see that the general resource usage is not that high. Uh, of course, we don't have that much player at the current uh, at the current moment, but uh, there is almost no additional um, CPU consumption and a memory consumption and we just uh, can run a few uh, or use using a smaller machines for our uh, for our servers finally let's uh, let's summarize some advantages of um, our socket from my point of view in general our socket is simple in development you don't have to do something more in order to start uh, writing your business logic, you just have to define your RSocket recipient or receiver, your 
uh, R socket connector, and that's it. In turn, you can use R socket RPC, which allows you to use RPC architecture in order to build your uh, API, and it provides you with the same code generation uh, feature as gRPC does. This is for high performance. R socket is for high performance because you don't have any overhead. You use only one connection. You multiplex all your uh, business logic, all your logical da data to one connection and use it uh, as much as possible. There is uh, some wide communication models. There is request response so you can build, use it in order to build plain CRUD applications with less resource usage and less CPU usage. You can be, you can use some you can use it for building some real time applications like exchange platforms and so forth and so on because it relies on s on a single connection it relies on efficient low uh, low overhead uh, binary messaging there is almost no overhead from uh, our socket itself like from up uh, from the protocol itself so you can build and use it in order to build efficient and high performance applications. And finally, there is higher flexibility in setup. You can use any language. There is implementation in JavaScript. There is implementation in C++. There is implementation in .NET. So the support is wide, really wide. Even guys from Chinese, from Alibaba, just built an implementation for R Socket Go. So there is almost all languages at the current moment support, um, support this protocol. And you can use it in order to build your applications. From the disadvantageous perspective, um, I see only one disadvantageous, which is kind of lack in wide um, support or adoption, because our socket is really new solution. We just started pushing it to, to, to the market. We just started talking about it. And it's really, really new and uh, offering some, some amazing futures. So we hope, we really hope that uh, at some point in time, it, 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 will, it becomes a standard for all network communication between client and servers. On the other hand, the maintainers also um, gives you some, believe, some, some uh, hopes. Because at the current moment, our socket is used in Facebook. So if you use plain Facebook Messenger, you are using webs, uh, our socket because uh, they are using all our socket future for their communication and back pressure and so forth and so on. We are one of the uh, primary uh, supporters of our socket. We are building our socket Java version. We are building our socket.NET version, and we build some enterprise solution on top of that, which allows you to simplify your development of real reactive system in general. And of course. There is a support from Pivotal, and you will see soon a support of R socket in R so in uh, Spring Framework Core itself. And finally, one of the new users is Alibaba Cloud, and our Chinese friends, which also started adopting of this technology and started building their servers and their solutions of on top of that protocol. In general, if you are going to, to look at the um, uh, comparison tab table between all protocols, we will see some uh, advantages and disadvantages uh, of every protocol. And following kind of this table, you will be able to see the benefits of usage of every protocol in general. Finally, to summarize, each protocol has its benefits. Uh, in case you are building a really simple application, maybe you don't have to, to use our socket, even uh, so it offers you the same functionality as HTTP, and it's, it's the development with uh, our socket is really simple. But uh, in case you want to build some high performance and efficient application with low resource usage, you have to use WebSocket, and of course you have to use R socket with some specific RPC architecture because from my point of view it simplifies general uh, API design and development and gathering everything with R socket you will be able to build real fast and high performance and low overhead application. Finally, in order if you're curious 
about our socket and if you want to learn more about our socket I encourage you to follow me uh, to follow my company and if you want to ask some questions about our socket I encourage you to visit some community page that we created for you also there is some video channel which gathers uh, all video about our sockets and if you want to learn a little bit more about protocol itself I encourage you to uh, to visit the second link and if you want to look at the R socket state in Spring, there is a like kind of a first commit to Spring Framework Core from Rosen Stojanovic, which provides integration of R socket with Spring messaging. Finally, if you want to, if you are looking for real enterprise solution with enterprise support with cloud native R socket with high scalable um, support and so forth and so, I encourage you to visit the last link. And if you have questions about our socket and about reactive programming, I'm welcoming you to, to ask them. Thank you a lot for your attention.